talk about Huda. We'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home. We'll talk about Huda. We'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, dear brothers and sisters, to another one of our live and direct programs of Viewers Pulse. I'm your host for the evening, Junaid Da. Dear brothers and sisters, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for tuning in, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this from all of us as a good deed. Brothers and sisters, we are here on Viewers Pulse. This is your hour. We have this hour, this program for you to communicate with us. Effectively today, as always, we look at the previous week that's gone by. We have some reports and we analyze and highlight some of the key features that we saw uh, in the last week. And also, we will discuss some of the upcoming events, some of the upcoming programs with their topics and with their uh, very special guests. Dear brothers and sisters, it's an interactive program. What does interactive mean? It means it's between me and yourselves. This is your time. We are here to listen to your feedback, your comments, your suggestions, and even positive criticism. Dear brothers and sisters, you can contact us in a number of different ways. First and foremost, and the most easiest, and it's direct to the studio, and you'll get to speak to me uh, directly. It's with our phone. So our number will be running across the screen. It does begin with 002, so do uh, dial that number to put your question uh, or your comment direct into the studio. And if you're in Egypt, you do not need to dial the 002. Uh, brothers and sisters, if you're unable to pick up your phone, you are able to email us and it will come straight into our office. Our email address is uh, pulse at huda.tv. If you uh, email us at that particular address, we will keep your emails. And as every week, we will read through your emails and try to put, shed some light and uh, discuss some of the comments or the questions that you pose to us uh, in your emails. Brothers and sisters, you can also contact us on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Huda TV. Now, brothers and sisters, the Facebook page really is full of information. I strongly encourage you uh, to jump onto the, to, to the web and turn to the page Huda TV and start to look at the content there. We have so many videos. We have our videos from, from the last week and, and, and weeks before of programs. At the same time, uh, we have a link that will take you to our main website where you will be able to look at our main website, which it does have a list of all of our programs and the airing times. And you get some background information on some of our speakers, some of our presenters, and some uh, information about what's going on behind the camera. So I strongly encourage you to visit our main uh, Huda TV web page and at the same time jump onto our Facebook page and like the page brothers and sisters uh, we are an Islamic Dawah TV channel so we are trying our very best with your help and with your support to promote the authentic message of the Quran and the Sunnah so first and foremost brothers and sisters I encourage you to like the page and then uh, send a invitation to your friends and to your families and encourage them also uh, to like the page you are spreading the work uh, the Islamic da'wah, we are calling people to the way of Islam. So by spreading this like, maybe inshallah ta'ala, you will inspire somebody. And matter of fact, there is a sister who sent us her story. And we will discuss her story in just a little while. But she watched a clip from Huda TV, which was discussing women's rights in Islam. And her journey began from this very clip, and she embraced Islam. Subhanallah. So brothers and sisters, do not procrastinate do not be lazy let's get active and let's like the page and let's link other people uh, to the page at the same time brothers and sisters you can also join us on twitter twitter.com uh, forward slash huda tv channel the benefit of joining us on twitter is that you get immediate updates so whatever we put up on the facebook page you'll get that sent to you straight away on 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 a tweet so if there is an upcoming program or there is an Islamic reminder, it'll come straight through onto your mobile device or whatever software that you're using, and you'll be able to see the latest information on Huda TV. Now, brothers and sisters, most importantly, and I can't uh, stress this enough, is our YouTube page, youtube.com 
forward slash Huda TV. Now, I strongly encourage you to jump onto YouTube and to subscribe to this channel. Now, why do I say subscribe, brothers and sisters? Because we are a TV channel. And on Huda TV, or the YouTube page, you are able to live stream all of our programs. You can see us uh, exactly how uh, everybody else can see on the satellite live on our YouTube channel. So we encourage you to subscribe. At the same time, we do have an archive of previous videos so you can select by date or select by title and watch any program that you like. And you can also leave your comments and we can have a discussion there on the things you agree with or the things you don't agree with. So brothers and sisters, uh, do jump onto our YouTube page and do uh, watch us on our live streaming if we haven't entered in uh, to your country via satellite at the moment. But we are working very hard, inshallah ta'ala, to get access into all the possible countries that we can. Dear brothers and sisters, that leaves me uh, with the last possible means of communication, and that's why Skype. So Huda underscore TV, that's our address. Uh, uh, Huda underscore TV, that's our address. So brothers and sisters, you also have the option of using Skype. Now, the advantage of Skype is you can voice call, you can video call, you can send us files or, or any kind of things that you, you want us to have a look at or review. Uh, so inshallah ta'ala, brothers and sisters, you have uh, this opportunity to contact us and communicate with us. And I strongly encourage you, first and foremost, is to pick up your phones and to call into the studio. And at the same time, don't forget, our question from last week, our competition still stands. And the lines are open up until uh, our second part in this program where we asked uh, a number of different questions. And I'm waiting to hear uh, the response uh, from our brothers and our sisters. But before we go into your emails and go into the programs of last week and the upcoming uh, programs, we do have with us the regional manager of Huda TV, Ahmed Fahmi. He's going to be talking to us over the phone. And inshallah ta'ala, as we're entering into the 10th year of operation, 10th year, mashallah, we have so many more programs and ideas that we want to convey to you. Uh, so let's talk to the regional manager, Ahmed Fahmi, and let's hear what he has prepared for us, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother Junaid. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm very well. Yourself, uh, how are you doing? Al Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. I'm very glad to be uh, your on-air guest this evening. You uh, remember last we talked during your Hajj coverage. MashaAllah, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> MashaAllah, you are, you are embarrassing me now. So. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm giving you a little credit. <laughs> okay, thank you very you much. I, I do appreciate that. Much. I ask thank Allah you. subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept uh, our Hajj and to accept the channel's efforts Allahumma that they put together. Ameen. Allahumma ameen. Okay. Allahumma ameen. Um, Mr. Ahmed, could I ask you first and foremost, uh, what are our viewers expecting in 2015? What is new? Yeah, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, I would like to relay some good news to our viewers, as a matter of fact. Uh, talking about Huda, uh, new projects for uh, 2015, uh, I would say we have lots to do, mashallah. Uh, uh, and I can give you uh, some uh, right now. Please. For instance, for programs, uh, we just finished uh, filming uh, an interesting uh, recorded program for Sheikh Okasha Kanini from USA uh, titled The Ten Reciters and Transmitters. Uh, you know, now for those, those for curries like uh, Hubs, Warsh, uh, NASA, etc. It's a very good uh, educational program. Uh, viewers will be seeing it uh, soon, inshallah. I, I don't know, you, you might have covered this before. Uh, uh, no, I, I, actually, two weeks ago, I think we had, uh, we had somebody, uh, we had Ibrahim Ahmada discussing with us some of the details of this program. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's a very good show, and it, it, uh, uh, it's first time to, to discuss such kind of topics of Qur'at on Huda, uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, second, uh, on January 15th, inshallah, we, we, we will start another uh, recorded program for Sheikh Mandouf Mahmoud uh, from America also, uh, titled uh, uh, Whisper Not. It's a temporary title, as a matter of fact, and the program discusses uh, um, uh, devil's whispers and how a believer can overcome it. It's, it's also another interesting program, mashallah. Okay. Uh, third, uh, there is, uh, this is the first time to talk about it, there is a very interesting idea for a new program for our beloved Sheikh Muhammad Salah uh, that's uh, still under, this, under study, as a matter of fact, 
But uh, I hope it will go through, inshallah. It needs lots of preparation, as a matter of fact. Uh, and we are expecting also, uh, maybe the brothers might have talked about it, we are expecting Sheikh Bin Dean Johnson uh, to come to uh, Egypt also for recording a couple of shows, inshallah, soon. Uh, talking about other Muslims in youth, uh, uh, Huda TV uh, will participate with a Kuwaiti Islamic organization in covering Dawa uh, activities at Asia World uh, Cup in Australia, inshallah. That, that, that is uh, between January 9th and January 30th, inshallah. We'll bring you live reports uh, from there covering all of our activities, like uh, distributing uh, translated, uh, translated uh, copies of Quran and uh, so many other activities calling for Islam during the World Cup. Uh, also, uh, there is a good uh, news. Uh, you know, people from Britain like you <laughs> will be interested about this. Uh, Huda will be broadcasting uh, very soon in Britain through uh, IPTV technology, uh, and particularly through a uh, free view service. We're just uh, waiting for a relevant uh, broadcast license from the, from Ofcom, which is uh, a British uh, tele a radio and television authority. That That is, uh, uh, we, we did all uh, tests, everything. We're waiting for the green light to broadcast, inshallah. That, that's the new thing for uh, the new year for our viewers in Britain. That's uh, uh, Another good uh, news, inshallah, uh, we'll be launching soon a new website for Huda TV. Though the one we have is, is good, but we have another one uh, using the most uh, up-to-date technology, and uh, it will be also it's social media friendly. As well, uh, we will uh, be launching uh, the first Huda application on smartphones using uh, iOS and uh, Android platform. Platform soon, inshallah, uh, where our viewers uh, will enjoy watching Huda live on the move, inshallah. Uh, last, uh, you just talked about it at, uh, at the beginning of your show of this evening. Uh, that uh, Huda will be celebrating uh, its first anniversary, uh, inshallah, next Ramadan. Uh, and there will be lots of festive programs and events. Uh, we need uh, the viewers to, to, uh, to relay their suggestions in this respect. That's all for now, and uh, thanks for having me on your show. Okay, Mr. Ahmed, uh, Mr. Ahmed, before you go, um, uh, it's, it's very rare to get you on the phone, so I want to just uh, take advantage of this. Uh, can I ask you, is there any bit of advice that you can give to our viewers uh, and on participating and bringing forward their ideas so that we could possibly implement them? Hello? What you? <coughs> can you repeat your questions? Because uh, uh, I'm, I'm talking on phone. I, so, I, 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 I didn't get the question. So, sure, no problem. Uh, Mr. Ahmed, I said, could you just encourage our viewers uh, to get more involved and to participate more and to present us with their ideas? Yeah, that, that, that's a very good idea. Uh, as a matter of fact, we are trying to enhance our uh, social media uh, uh, sites. Uh, so we would we we will be more than interested in getting our viewers ideas for programs. I mean, it would be great if we get our uh, ideas from our viewers what what they like to to see on Huda, uh, and and also n not uh, not to complement our work all the time, but we we like also to get uh, critics in order to straighten up our uh, uh, our way of doing programs. Because we are doing da'wah to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, we, we may do uh, some bit and fold here and there. And that's why it would be very nice and uh, very appreciated if our viewers can give us their critics and points of views all the time, please. So using uh, Facebook, we have, we have access to the sites, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, and other sites, inshallah. And our new website, there, there is uh, a room for that, very, very obvious, uh, and everyone can voice or, uh, or, or take his opinion or her opinion, inshallah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, 
Mr. Ahmed Fahmi, for giving us your time and giving us your thoughts on, on, on the upcoming year. I'd like to thank you very much. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, you heard it direct from the regional manager. We have so many more projects and so many more ideas coming. I'm the first one uh, to show my happiness that, mashallah ta'ala, we are now going to be, well, soon, inshallah ta'ala, we will be broadcasting in the UK. There is a big fan base there, inshallah ta'ala. We will open up uh, onto TVs and people can watch us uh, directly there. That's excellent news. At the same time, uh, onto our smartphones, we're going to have an application coming out, just like uh, Mr. Ahmed said. And you can access all of our programs, our Islamic reminders, all the different things involved with Huda Direct on your mobile phone. So this is excellent progression. And finally, dear brothers and sisters, Huda TV, like Mr. Ahmed said, is going to be indulging and working hard in the upcoming World Cup, the Asian World Cup, where we're going to be getting involved in da'wah and calling people to the way of Al-Islam. And inshallah ta'ala, we ask Allah that he accepts this from us and that people are able to learn and understand the deen al-Islam the way it is meant to be. Now, dear brothers and sisters, moving on from the phone call, we do have your regular emails. So let's have a look at a few emails before we take a very short break. But um, there are some very interesting emails, actually. The first one we have um, is from brother Yunus. Yunus Medin, he repeats, Thank you, Huda, for all your service. I'm from Algeria, and I wanted to learn English. So I can't find a good channel, but your channel. So uh, I thank you very much for your, for your programs, and I benefited very much. So Brother Yunus here, uh, he's enjoying our programs. At the same time, uh, he's learning his English. So mashallah, we are benefiting people, not just from the religious perspective, but also from a linguistic perspective. So alhamdulillah, mashallah, Brother Yunus, we are very happy to hear your response. We have another email from Brother Muhammad Jamil Abu Bakr. He responds, Assalamu alaikum, dear Brother Usama. Please, we want, to, we want Huda TV to upload all episodes of Knowledge to Action by Brother uh, Mahdi. Some episodes were uploaded while some episodes are missing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward Huda TV abundantly. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, dear Brother Muhammad, uh, two things. First and foremost, uh, you know, we will send your salams to Brother Usama. Brother Usama has moved on and we miss him very much. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, we'll pass your salams over to him. Secondly, the elements of that particular program that are missing, we inshallah ta'ala, we will upload them as soon as possible. We have a team working very hard uh, with our programs and with YouTube and uploading videos. So please do forgive us uh, if there is a if there is a part or two uh, missing due to maybe a lack of time, I'm not too sure, but inshallah ta'ala, we will have those videos uploaded as soon as possible. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, we have uh, come to the end of part one. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, brothers and don't go too far away. We want to continue in part two looking at some of your responses f uh, on our Facebook page. And at the same time, we also have a number of reports that we would like for you to watch and give us your comments on. Uh, so brothers and sisters, inshallah ta'ala, let's go for a small break and then join me and join the team in just a few moments. <laughs> O oh Allah, to you belongs all praise. You are the light of the heavens and the earth and all that is within them. Inna alladheena kathabu bi ayatina wa astakbaru anha la tufattah la tufattahu lahum abwaabu al-samai wa la yadkhuloon al-jannah حتى يلج الجمل في سم الخياف. Sister Amina is asking, is it true that you can see Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم in the dream? The answer is yes. Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم in an authentic hadith, he said, من رآني في المنام فقد رآني فإن الشيطان لا يتمثل به. After the soul departs the body, it makes its journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it was righteous soul 
it will be given permission to enter into the heavens. But if the soul was wicked, no. إنه من يشرك بالله فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة. Whosoever associates someone in worship with Allah, even if it is me, Allah سبحانه وتعالى will make Jannah haram and lawful for that person. Huda TV's social media sites are the best way to contact us from anywhere around the world. Stay connected with Huda TV's latest news and programs through Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Skype, and Instagram. It's fast and easy. Stay up to date with your favorite shows and scholars today. Huda TV, a light in every home. Allah, Allah, so let me stray, please guide my way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk on your favorite channel, Huda TV. I'm your host, Arkham Rashid. He actually did uh, such and such that you're accusing him of in your mind. Uh, so now I want to start off with my right hand side, uh, Brother Ahmed. If you can just tell us what your thoughts were on that video, what can you extract from that video? Go ahead. Would you say some of the youth uh, turn to drugs, especially you know in your country, if if they don't have jobs or you know it's because they want to get away from their daily normal lives? Would you say that's okay, a reason? Absolutely, that? that's true. Some yes. people just resort to drug as the last option because they they get themselves straight out and they instead of depression but they don't know where to turn for help. What's the wisdom behind Islam prohibiting drugs? Uh, Islam, you know, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. you know, uh, all the Islamic rulings in general, they are just prescribed for preserving two main things. The religion, mm -hmm. which is spirituality, and the worldly or the mundane things, which is, you know, the, the soul, the human soul. So I think um, a message would be just to stay completely away, away from, it. from it. Even we can say, oh look, it's haram. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome day brothers and sisters, part two of Viewers Pulse. Uh, brothers and sisters, if you remember correctly, last week we posed the question, which prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was mentioned the most in the Holy Quran? This question is still open, and we're going to leave the lines open till the end of the first segment. Uh, we do have a number of responses from emails, and I will read them out shortly. But first, I want to leave the lines open and hear uh, somebody call in and give us the correct answer. Last week, we had Sister Aisha call us and respond to the question, uh, which uh, we had, which, how old was the Prophet ﷺ when he received revelation? And Sister Aisha from the KSA responded correctly with 40 years old. So this week's question is still open and we will leave the lines open. So brothers and sisters, please rush and call in. We've had two sisters uh, call in and win on the go. So brothers, please, let's pick up the phone and let's lift up your... Uh, let's lift up... Uh, okay, so uh, we have some responses uh, about some of the comments that we have on our Facebook page. On our Facebook page, there was a comment there asking our viewers, how much do you love Huda TV? And we've got a number of very beautiful uh, responses, and I want to share those with you because they were really, uh, they touched my heart, and I want them to reach out to you. First and foremost, we have a response by Brother Nazir Ali. He says, more than the number of breaths that you take in a single day. So Brother Nazir Ali, he loves Huda so much. Uh, second response, we have uh, Sister Amanda Noor. And I want to take a moment here and just uh, share something uh, about Amanda, Amanda Noor. Last week, I did promise to read out your story about how uh, you embraced Islam. But um, I was reading your story. And uh, when I read your story, 
I was so moved, I was so touched that subhanAllah, I want to dedicate a whole report on your story and how you became Muslim because subhanAllah, it's a very touching story and it's linked with Huda TV directly. So uh, inshallah ta'ala, please sister, do forgive me. I did say to you last week that we were going to play it, uh, going to read out your story, today, but we've had a better idea. So inshallah ta'ala, we're going to create a small video, a small report uh, with your story. Inshallah ta'ala, share this with our viewers. So. So inshallah ta'ala, Amanda, uh, sister, please do be patient with us, and I'm very grateful uh, for your response. Now, uh, inshallah ta'ala, I understand we have a phone call. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Aisha from the KSA. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sister, how are you doing today? Alhamdulillah. Uh, I will try for your question answer, inshallah. Okay, go ahead, sister. Prophet Musa, alayhi salam. MashaAllah, well done, very good. <laughs> Excellent. So is that, is that the second week in a row you've won? 218, uh, nine, I think, place, he mentioned, alayhi salam. Okay, 218. Sister Aisha, can I ask you, uh, are you the same Aisha that called us last week? Yes. Excellent. Yes. So you have now not just uh, won twice, but you are the winner twice in a row on Viewers Pulse. So, mashallah ta'ala, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from you and to increase you in your good deeds and uh, inshallah ta'ala to help us with our programs as well. Thank you, sister. Thank you so much. Okay, sister. So, brothers and sisters, we have our winner again. Sister Aisha from the KSA has called in and has taken the trophy again. So, mashallah ta'ala, we ask Allah to accept it from her. Let's read some of the answers that we did have. Uh, we had Sister Sophia who said Musa alayhi salam. So, she's correct as well. Well done, sister. We had Um Aisha uh, go on. She said, I think Musa alayhi salam, so now it's, it's a definite Musa alayhi salam. And we have also Sister Nurhaya uh, who said uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which unfortunately is not the correct answer. The correct answer is Musa alayhi salam. So inshallah ta'ala, dear brothers and sisters, we have uh, closed that door. Our next question will come at the end of the program, so do stay tuned. Now. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, before we go over to our first report, I want to finish talking about some of the comments that we took uh, on that question. We posed a question on our Facebook page, how much did you love Huda TV? And Sister Amanda Noor, she drew a picture and she said this much, like she spread the hands out and she said this much. So, mashallah, very touching. We also had Brother Yathrib, he said 200%. And we had Sister Anas, who said 100%. And we had Brother Ayyam who said 1 million percent. So, mashallah, thank you, brothers and sisters, for your support. It's very touching and very encouraging. Now, brothers and sisters, let's go over and watch a short report. Uh, this is taken from our live program, Huda, tonight. I would like for you to watch this program and then call me uh, after the program and let's discuss uh, the contents of it. It's a report talking about who is Abu Dhar al ghaffari So, uh, let's watch this report. Join me in just a few moments. Who is Abu Dhar al Ghaffari and, and you know, tell me about his tribe. What tribe did he come from? Uh, well, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim wa sallallahu ala nabi al Ummi. When you look at uh, Abu Dhar al Ghaffari, uh, sometimes you come to understand something and um, I would just like to mention this before we speak of Abu Dhar. Uh, sometimes you would notice that sometimes they say uh, every saint has a history. Uh, meaning that every person who becomes a person who shuns this world and has a past, uh, has a past mm. which makes him um, see the evil treachery and the evil deceits of this world. And I think so if you look for example like Bishar Hafi who was an uh, ascetic scholar, who, who was sagacious, uh, very pious and uh, God-fearing. He was one of the scholars that had a history. Another person, for example, um, his name does not come to mind, uh, but he was also, um, uh, so some mentioned that when he heard the verse, Alam amanu uh, kulubuhum, he was also one of the scholars that uh, also when he heard this verse, uh, he changed his life. 
uh, similarly, <coughs> when you look at Abu Dhar Ghifari, uh, some narrations mention that um, his tribe was from the north of Hijaz, which was Medina, and uh, they were in a small uh, valley. And uh, this valley where they were situated, it was a pathway for the caravans of the Quraysh to pass through when they go to Syria to and fro. So uh, they used to use this as a means to pass, and they had to pass through this valley. And the Ghifari tribe was known for their uh, looting and for their, uh, they were what you would say in today's time, thugs. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so they would rob and, uh, you know, they would, um, you know, steal from these caravans which, uh, which would pass through that valley. Some narrations uh, mention that, uh, if you look at in some encyclopedias and in some narrations, they make mention that Abu Dhar was one of the most famous of them. Mm. And he was uh, one of the most powerful, uh, meaning that sometimes he would even go on an expedition like this on his own. <laughs> where <laughs> he would, he would uh, one man, uh, you know, uh, t take the care of him by himself. And so it shows you his power, his will. And uh, what happened is, when his blood cooled down and when he realized uh, that this is not the life uh, because he mentions that he also after this he went into another stage where he began worshipping any type of God and um, he used to uh, he, he, he would stand in front of that, uh, of that idol of that God for hours upon hours until his feet would begin to pain and he would even sometimes faint so you can see he went into stages to recognize and to find himself. And uh, this shows you that sometimes when you look at the lives of people, you see that it takes you years. Sometimes it takes you uh, years and time for you to uh, find yourself, to, to, to realize your objectives and to learn who you are and what is your purpose on this world. And uh, finally, when he was having tea with somebody, what, 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 what one person, they were just sharing a cup of tea, and that person mentioned to him, and he said to him, you know, you have certain qualities in you, for example, like seclusion and searching for the truth. You know, you're always searching for something which will content your heart. Yeah. Uh, I've, we've heard of a, of a prophet who has dawned in Mecca, and he is claiming that he is uh, the prophet of God, but he also, and he, he claims some of the things that you do, for example, he claims, he, say, he says that you should uh, be, uh, shun this world, uh, you should be honest, he calls to truth. And so he asks this person, and what do they say about this person? They say, no, some call him a magician, some call him a fortune teller. Uh, so these things made Abu Dhar very, uh, it started playing on his mind. And when this person left, what Abu Dhar done was he sent his brother Unais to Mecca to find out what is happening. Mm. Um, I think so, if you look back, this is very wise decisions that they would make and this teaches us, you know, we need to take every aspect. Someone like Sayyidina Hussein, when he heard of the letters being sent from Kufa, what did he do? He sent Muslim bin Aqil first to go and see what is the situation. So this shows us that they had it in themselves already to when they hear news, they don't just accept it. Yeah. And they this need, is they need a source to confirm it. They need a source mm -hmm. to confirm it and someone who they can a confidant, someone who they can trust in. This teaches us how many times people come and visit us at home and they hey, did you hear? Uh, this guy uh, did you hear what he done? Mm -hmm. he <laughs> and then <laughs> And then we pick up the phone and tell somebody else. <laughs> and tell somebody else, subhanAllah. With an additional spice to it. With an additional spice. Like how they say, uh, there's a saying, uh, if you, the, the fastest way that uh, if you want news to spread is tell your wife, uh, tell, tell it to your wife and tell her not to tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the fastest way of spreading news. If your um, wife is watching this, you'll be in trouble <laughs> when you go home. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, subhanallah, this shows us that, um, that, and this is mentioned in Surah Al-Hujurat, that all uh, oh people, when any type of news comes to you, then first clarify. Mm. So similarly, this is, look at them, this is in the halat, uh, in the condition of uh, disbelief, where they already had qualities of a believer. <laughs>
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome dear brothers and sisters. Joining us after that very short report by one of our beloved presenters, Arkham Rashid, who was with our special guest, Brother Zakaria. Every Mondays they discuss a particular companion of the Prophet Sallallahu And in our last episode, they were talking about Abu Ghar, Abu Dhar al Ghaffari. Now, brothers and sisters, I would like to hear your points of view. What did you think of what you heard? What did you think? And what are your comments and feedbacks and your thought on what was said? Now, there are some things that, you know, I'd like to pick up on that really made me laugh. I was just sitting here watching the report and I couldn't stop laughing. Uh, first and foremost, on a serious note, uh, and that is to not just accept news from anybody. Abu Dhar Ghaffari was a person who would verify whatever he had. So just because it's coming from somebody close or somebody who you think you can trust doesn't necessarily mean that it is correct. Maybe that person is misled or confused or maybe even lying. So we need to check our sources of information and check news before we act upon it because we could uh, end up burning bridges or destroying other people's lives. Now, more importantly, what Brother Zakaria mentioned, which really made me laugh, he said, if there is a particular news that you would like to spread, the quickest way to do that is to tell your wife and then tell your wife not to tell anybody else. <laughs> and then it will go out. Brother Zakaria, mashallah ta'ala, he presents us with the seerah or the stories of our companions. And at the same time, he also makes us laugh. Now, brothers and sisters, we have uh, another report, which is from our beloved Sheikh Muhammad Salah. And from one of his most watched programs, which is Gardens of the Pious, dating back to 31st of December. Let's have a look at this report and then discuss it uh, when we return. So let's have a look at this report. What is an Najash? An Najash is to inflate prices by overbidding against others without the intention of buying. So what is the intention behind overbidding? It could be one of two things. One, benefiting the seller. Agreeing with the seller to overbid so that if somebody is very much interested in buying this, instead of paying 100, he will end up paying 150. Why? Because somebody else who is bidding and overbidding He's not planning on buying, but that's a, a scam. And the second reason that the person who would do that for the sake of hurting others without the intention of buying, not even arranging with the seller. So he just wants to hurt people. We have an example, the stock market. And in the stock market, there is sometimes big scams. You know, in our uh, Middle Eastern world, you know, they have uncovered big operations of billions of dollars where people, sometimes belonging to the governments or the ruling families or, you know, they are playing around and doing things like that and ending up manipulating the prices of the shares and making profits in billions of dollars. This is all haram. So an najash and overbidding and inflating the prices is haram. Whether you're doing this in affiliation with the seller, where you're taking your share, or you're favoring him, or you're doing this simply to fire up the market and hurt the buyers, because the intention is evil. That is called an najash. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa la tanajashu. You know, the scholars, Al-Imam Ahmed, wa Shafi'i, wa Malik, wa Abu Hanifa, have discussed this matter thoroughly from the fiqh point of view. What about the business transaction itself? I went to the market to buy some items, and we were bidding, and somebody overbid, and eventually I ended up paying overprice, maybe 30, 50% extra, because I was trapped you know, in this scam. In this uh, in condition, the scholar said, the contract itself is valid because there was ijab and qabul. But the buyer has all the right to revoke this contract or have what is known as al-khiyar, not khiyar or shart, the option of revoking the contract and getting back all his money. Or the authorities 
would find out the regular price and will approve the business, the business uh, uh, transaction, and will give him the balance, the difference. He has to pay him the balance. Why? So that people would not do that next time and so on. So a najash is haram. Why is it haram? Because it opens the door to, cheat, to cheating and deceiving people. And that leads to hatred. What is the next prohibition as in the hadith? He said, وَلَا تَبَغَضُوا And do not hate one another. Do not hate one another. Do not do anything which leads to hatred. Such as al-najash, al-hasad. وَلَا يَبَعَ أَحَدُكُمْ عَلَى بَيْعِ أَخِيهِ وَلَا يَخْطُبْ أَحَدُكُمْ عَلَى خِطْبَةِ أَخِي What does it mean? It means that if you know that somebody proposed to a girl, he wants to marry her, or he is spoken to her father, the father gave him a promise, insha'Allah, that's called khitbah, but it is not a marriage contract yet. They are not officially married, which means either one of the two parties can withdraw without any penalty, without any... Uh, being blameworthy because it's mere promise. But during this period, what is known as khitbah, it is not permissible for you to propose to the same girl. Yeah, but I, I think I'm more qualified. And this girl is the girl of my dream. I always dreamt of marrying her. A lot of people say she's very pretty. I know she's pretty. And her family are very good. And her father is like your intimate friend. But since she's already engaged, it is not permissible, permissible to do khitbah over another khitbah, to propose while she's already engaged. Unless if they broke up, so no chances for them anymore, now we can propose. But if there is a proposal that is pending, it is not permissible for you to propose to the same girl. It becomes haram. Similarly, Somebody is buying something from the market. And I used to see this when I was, uh, you know, a, a kid and a child. I would go to the market to buy things that my mother would send me. And you're about to buy it. And it is the last item for innocence. And another woman would come and say, how much is it? They said, sold out. Okay, how much did you sell it for? 20. I'll pay you 22. He already told you that it is sold out. This transaction is haram. Because it leads to hatred. The man said, I already sold it out. Or I gave him a word, even without completing the transaction. That is the meaning of, Brothers and sisters, Muslims and non-Muslims, if you happen to be watching this segment, what do you think of these teachings? Aren't they beautiful? Don't you think that they maintain harmony and love in any society? لا تحسدوا ولا تناجشوا ولا تباغضوا ولا تدابروا What is the meaning of التدابر? التدابر is to turn your back to give your back to who? to your brother he meets you and you're trying to avoid him so give him your back <تصفيق> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, dear brothers and sisters. After watching a short report by Sheikh Muhammad Salah, where he is talking about some very fundamental aspects of how to bring about cohesion and peace and love uh, in a society, the first thing he discussed was what is a najash. Um, first time I've heard this terminology. So here the Sheikh was talking about the concept of inflating prices for no reason. Uh, to, just to cause animosity amongst your friends or just to make a quick profit. So raising prices uh, without any reason is totally not allowed in Al Islam. Brothers and sisters, at times we can find ourselves in places like auctions or these kind of places and people are raising prices. And here the, the, the concept, the Islamic principle of sticking to the price that is asked for, not inflating them, it's one that brings about cohesion in society and people will not be exploited in that manner. Secondly, uh, the Sheikh discussed a, a very important point and that is about proposing to a person who is already engaged. Unfortunately, in our societies we can find uh, that people understand or know that a particular person is engaged to a particular brother or sister, but they will not stop and they will not uh, uh, stop in their 
uh, in the goal in trying to break this engagement or trying to engage with this particular person. So here the Sheikh makes it very clear that a Muslim is not to propose to a proposed person. Brothers and sisters, um, the lines are open and we, we want to hear from you, want to hear your comments, want to hear your thoughts on what you have just seen or anything that has gone by or anything that you would like to, th to, to bounce ideas with myself. Uh, brothers and sisters, until your phone calls, let's move over to our next report. Our next report is titled Don't Be Sad and it was aired on the 27th of December. So let's have a look at this short report, How to Overcome the hardships in life. Let's have a look at this and then join me in just a few moments. I think there's a few things we need to realize. I think uh, the first is to realize that the opportunities for good deeds are a lot more vast than we think they are. So we tend to think, right, the good deeds are charity, right. prayer, and we really limit it, you know, we might yeah. even limit it to the five pillars, you know. Yeah. The good deeds are going to be my salah, my zakah, and my, you know, yeah. fasting, and my hajj, you know, like. Or just giving money sometimes. You know, like, I give I give $100 to this chair. I give this. Sometimes we, just, we reduce it just to money, right? So it becomes very restricted. But in fact, you know, the, the, the food that you put in your family's mouth is a sadaqah. The smile that you give to your brother is a sadaqah. You know, a good word right. that you say, a kalimat tayyibah sadaqah. Okay. You know, a good word that you say is a sadaqah. Okay. Now, the key to this is, is knowledge. And I think I would recommend two uh, things that people, or two books, both of them authored by Al-Imam Al-Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, in order to give people a real understanding of the good deeds that you can do. I think the first is his book, The 40 Hadith, in yes, which he mentions yes. 42 Hadith. Yes. And if you add to that, a lot of them add to that eight from Ibn okay. Rajab, making 50. Really, some of these have in them some, some amazing concepts and principles relating to doing good deeds, okay. including the hadith, follow the bad deed, with the good, it will wipe it out. Okay. Um, also, I would highly recommend Riyadh al-Salihin. Why, brother, why? Riyadh al-Salihin is a book which Imam al-Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, authored to gather together the virtue of doing good deeds. Because I think sometimes we need a little bit of motivation. Certainly. You certainly. know, we, we get down about it, and I've prayed, but my dua hasn't been answered. And sometimes we, we forget, uh, we, we actually forget the, the benefits we get from doing good deeds. And you know, sometimes I remember, you know, every now and again, Fajr and Isha, you know, especially Fajr in the Masjid, Isha in the Masjid, and it becomes... Oh, so you're tired, perhaps, you're tired, you have and to you're thinking, to I'm going to pray at home, and, right. you know, I'll just pray here. And, you know, subhanAllah, <laughs> then you remember the hadith that if the people knew what was in the, the Fajr and the Isha prayer, they would come to it even if they had to crawl. And that the companions used to come with a man carried between two men. I, one man would pick the right. man from one side and one from the other, and they would drag him to, the, to attend the Fajr and the Isha prayer because of what the virtue that was in them. Um, and you know the Prophet is saying that if people knew what was in the Adhan and in the first row, and if they found nothing other than to draw lots, to they do it, they would draw lots over who goes in the first row. Okay. Now you go in the masjid, the first row is empty and everyone is sitting in the back yeah. in the back row. So yeah. it's about knowing the virtue of okay. doing the deeds. And okay. there's some, you know, people sometimes have problems in this in terms of weak hadith and, and misconceptions. But Riyadh al-Sarheen is a really good book okay. that you can use to find out what you're going to get by praying, what you're going to get by you know, giving sadaqah, what you're going to get by smiling at people, what you're going to get about being nice, why, the virtue of good manners, right. just to motivate you to say, right, you know what it is? There is a reason, there is a benefit right. okay. to do more good deeds. So simply by learning a little bit, understanding why we do something, for example, prayer or charity or fasting, and understanding the reward that Allah will have in store for me for that, and the virtue of doing it, this in itself will increase your, your, increase your iman, and perhaps lift you out of de depression. Yeah. For example, you know, sometimes we pray mechanically. Oh, we have to pray real quick, take a break, we have to pray. But if we know why we're doing it, and we understand the virtue of doing it, and understand the reward is, that is waiting for us, inshallah, then what you're saying is this can lift us out of our depression in itself. Just the virtue of knowing the benefit of good deeds. Definitely. And I think, um, I mean, why we do something, this is actually something we have to mention. It's a good point to, to mention to people. The main reason why we do anything in Islam is because Allah told us to do it. And we don't always know the wisdom behind every good deed. Okay. But not so much why we do it, but the virtue of doing things. As in, what, what am I going to get out of it? What, what reward am I going to get? Right. For example, with the wudu, the, 
the uh, the sins fall off you while you are making wudu, even from, you know, in between your fingers and your fingernails. You know, the water that falls off your body while you are making wudu, your sins fall off even from in between your fingers and even from your fingernails, that your, your sins fall off from them. Okay. So by knowing that, by knowing that, that just gives you that motivation that yeah. actually, you know, Maybe I could, you know, go and renew my wudu. Maybe I could go and pray two rak'ah after wudu. Maybe I could ask Allah to forgive me. Maybe I could sit and say, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al-Azim. Okay. And then Subhanallah, you know, through that, really feeling that, you know, actually, this is a means for me to get out of my difficulty. Right. We only really have two minutes left, brother, but I wanted to ask a quick question and let you close the way you would like. Uh, for perhaps fasting is a good deed that is really good, easy for this person, this sister. And giving in charity is easy for that brother. And making athkar is, this person enjoys it. I mean, there's so many different types of ibadah. I mean, is it okay for me as somebody, as a normal person at any given time, to kind of pick and choose what ibadah works for me and implement it as a means of getting out of my, my depression? And is that, is that acceptable? I think it is. And I think there are three things uh, regarding it. First of all, there are some deeds that you have to do at certain times. So, for example, when the prayer time comes, you can't be doing dhikr in the back. Right. You know, like when the, you know, the prayer time comes, that's it. It's the prayer. But in the times when you have an option, there are two things here. There, first is those deeds you do very well. For example, you know that you struggle a little bit with some of the prayers, like in terms of voluntary prayers, but you know that you really concentrate when you're reading Quran. So maybe, okay. you know, it's worth, you know, when you have a choice between right, doing right. one or the other, and there's no virtue over one over the other, to do the one that you do with a higher quality. Okay. Having said that, and on the other side, on the flip side of that, actually there's an interesting point, that sometimes there's a greater reward in struggling to do something okay. that you find a little bit difficult right. in order to get near to Allah through that, and that is from the greatest reasons to raise your iman. <laughs>
Huda is the light in your home. We'll talk about Huda. We'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home.